My car door is hard to open. And it doesn't close too well either. The striker plate is all banged up. And I definitely shouldn't be able to do this with the door. Apparently all these problems are caused by this worn out hinge. Or maybe it's the one on the bottom that's causing all the problems. According to the internet, I can solve all those problems with this $14 hinge pin and bushing kit that I bought at Advance Auto Parts. We'll see about that. The first thing I'm going to do is turn my floor jack into a door jack to keep the door from flopping around like a salmon when I take the hinges off. I also tied the door to my garbage container for a little extra peace of mind. Now it's hard to see and I can't really get the camera in there, but on the chassis side there's a stud and nut and on the door side there are two bolts. I think they're 13 millimeter, and I'm gonna have to try and get them off, off camera. I'm hoping I don't have to remove the door entirely. You can't see it too well, but I've got a 13 millimeter ratcheting wrench, and my strategy is to loosen the nuts on the top and bottom hinges so I can get just enough play to get at the bolts on the door side. This one's a little bit tight, but it's coming off. I got the nuts off, but now I've realized each hinge has a bolt in there too that you can't see, but it's behind that stud. And I'm gonna get in there with a ratchet and a socket, hopefully. Access to this inner bolt on the chassis side is turning out to be a big issue. So I'm gonna have to go to these bolts on the door side first. And I'm just gonna loosen them, hopefully to get enough access to the inner ones. This is the slightly scary part. I have the door just far enough out of the way so I think I can get the hinges out, but I don't want to take the door completely off because then I would have to deal with the wiring harness. So let's see what I can do here. So now with the help of my well-worn snap-on ratchet and a Craftsman socket, I can get this bolt out of here. And if you're wondering why there's so much sun glare, well, it's 80 degrees and beautiful here in upstate New York today. And after a bit of coaxing, I got my hinge. From this weird angle, you can kind of see how tight everything is in here. Also, be careful that your door doesn't bang against your fender and scratch your paint like mine's doing right now. This is the part of the process where the door started to try to fall on the ground. So I could have driven to Harbor Freight with one door and got a door hanger thingy, or I could just use my recycling bin. So thank you, County Waste. And now I can finally remove the bottom hinge. Now when it comes to car hinges, I'm not an expert, I'm a layperson. But even as a layperson, I don't think that this hinge is in very good shape. Look at that, there's a ton of play. Now the top hinge, I'm tempted to just leave it as it is because it looks like it's gonna be complicated. You can see the pin is kinda of crooked. So depending on how difficult it is to fix the bottom hinge, I may just reinstall this one as it is. Why open a can of worms if you don't need to open a can of worms? Now the first thing I'm gonna do is clean these hinges with some brake cleaner. And you should always use this stuff in a well-ventilated area, like for example, anywhere other than my basement. Now I'm gonna use my Dremel tool, my Craftsman Dremel tool, to grind out this old pin. The Dremel wasn't working so well, so I'm gonna to switch to this angle grinder, which honestly I find to be a frightening tool, but I think it's gonna work better. Well, it looks like I may have ground down a little more hinge than pin, but I'm gonna use a punch and try and knock the rest of the pin out of the way. Oops, I guess I need a stronger punch. I had to reconfigure the punch a little bit, but the pin is coming out. Now I can take it out of the vise. I got it in there real tight. And there's no pin. That looks great. Now that the other pin is out, we can get a good look at this hinge. And yeah, I, I probably should hit it with some spray paint. But in here, here's the bushing. And man, that is just totally shot. And here's the other bushing, which 
I don't think should be this loose. I don't think I should be able to just pop that out with my hand. But there's your pin that's all ground off. And now I'm going to try and figure out how to put this uh, back together because the pin kit is kind of short on instructions. Now the first part is easy. We just press the new bushings into this part of the hinge where the old bushings came out. Now you press these little nylon sleeves into the bushings, I think, and I'll let you know if it doesn't work. Now making sure that you have the hinge oriented correctly, you push the pin in from the bottom and out through the top. And this is gonna be a little bit of a tight fit, but there it comes. Now let's do the other one. This isn't really easy. But I don't want to use any tools. So I'm just going to push it through by hand. That didn't really work, so I'm going to try some gentle persuasion with channel lock pliers. And see if that'll get it in. I'm not a huge fan of drilling, so I'm going to see if a few well-placed taps of the ball-peen hammer will drive it through. Ultimately, I decided to use my bench vise as a press. And I'm using a socket here to protect the pin. And it seems to be working just fine. And I think that's about as good as it's going to get. This hinge feels unbelievably better than it did with the old worn out bushings. It's tight and it's smooth and all I have to do now, put these little spring washers and retaining clips on here and that's gonna be kind of tricky so I'll do it off camera. Well, maybe I'll show you how to do just one. And see, this is why it's tricky. But, little snap, there you go. I'm amazed at how well engineered this kit is considering that it's just a you know, a little box full of junk. So, thank you, Need a Part. That's the uh, 38431 hinge, pinch, and bushing kit, $14.19 at Advanced Auto Parts. Now, as I examine the front hinge, I realize I need to do this front hinge too, but I don't have time to do it today, especially not on camera. So I'm gonna put this back in as it is, because it seems reasonably tight. The way to align it, apparently, you know, see how this is painted, but there's an area that's not. You gotta align the screw or the bolt with that painted area and that'll help align the hinge. And this is something I've never ever done. So hopefully the door will be hanging reasonably well when I'm finished. And this is definitely way easier to do now that the door is out of the way. And when you reinstall the hinges, make sure to use the right bolts. These ones go on the chassis side, these ones go on the door side. As you can imagine, the hard part of this job is getting the door aligned, especially since I have it held in place with two garbage buckets and a floor jack. But now that I have the bolts started, it seems to be going pretty smoothly. Without a doubt, the hardest part has been getting the door realigned, but I think with this last bolt, I may just have it. I thought I could get away with just fixing the pins in the bottom hinge, but the top hinge was totally worn out too. And the body was getting all dented and scraped because when the door closed, it would bang into the body. Also, the door striker was in really rough condition and the door latch was totally beat up. So I propped up the door the same way that I did before with my jack and some wires on my garbage can. And I started the nuts with a 13 millimeter gear wrench. And that worked pretty well for the rear nut, but... I needed to switch to a 13 millimeter socket for the other nut, the one that's toward the front of the car. And here's another shot of that. Now, with the hinge mostly detached, I realized that it wasn't going to come out because there wasn't enough clearance. So I had to use the gear wrench to get rid of the bolts that hold the lower hinge onto the door. And once the lower hinge was removed, I was able to get the upper hinge out but I did have to prop up the other side of the door on a jack stand so that it wouldn't fall down. So now here's the top hinge, which is free. 
and here's the top hinge on the bench. I've used a zip tie to secure the hinge and a little bit more on that later. Now here's where I marked the hinge so I'd know what side is the top of it. And here's another view of the hinge and another view of the hinge and another view and another view so you get a good idea of what this hinge looks like once it's out of the car. And here's one last view. So now I've got the hinge in the vise and I'm going to squash the spring and then I'm going to hold the spring with another zip tie so that I can get the spring out of the hinge because the spring is under some pressure. So here I am kind of squashing the spring in the vise and now I got the spring out and you can see the top of the pin and that needs to be ground off. So I started with a rotary tool with a grinding wheel on it. Is that a grinding wheel? And that was taking forever, so I switched to my angle grinder. And there were some sparks, but it really got the job done quickly. So here's the hinge with the top of the pin ground off of it. And now I repositioned the hinge in the vise. And I used just a little punch to punch out the pin, and that came out really easily. Not so much with the other pin. So first of all, the other pin's in a bad spot, so I wasn't able to use the angle grinder. So I had to switch to the rotary tool, and that took a long time. So now, here you can see the top of the pin has been ground off. And I'm using a screwdriver to kind of wiggle the hinge back and forth. I've got the pin clamped in the vise, and I'm trying to use a screwdriver to wiggle the hinge back and forth, and that didn't work at all to get the pin out. So here I stacked up a socket and some washers so that I could press the pin out and I put a little nut on top of the pin because it was just the right size, put it back in the vise to press it out, and it came out a little bit, but it was still stuck in there. So I had to, you know, put it back in the vise, and I looked at it, and you could see the pin is just kind of hanging halfway out, but it will not come all the way out. So I moved the top part of the hinge out of the way, and the pin needed some more grinding. It was like mushroomed in two spots instead of just one. So back to the rotary tool to grind off the rest of the pin. And now the pin is finally out of the way, which took forever. This was shouldn't have been a complicated job, but it turned pretty complicated. So here's the hinge, and you can see the bushings are really worn out. The hinge is really worn out. I probably should have just bought a new hinge. And here are the little steel bushings that were in the hinge. Those are just toast. So... The kit, the pin kit, comes with new steel bushings that go in, and then it has new plastic bushings that are probably, I don't know, Delrin plastic? Is that what they are? So here's the hinge in two pieces with the bushings installed. Now I put the hinge back together and position it correctly. Now I use the vise and a socket so that I can press the pins in, and I put the socket in there so the pin has somewhere to go. And then I flipped it around, pressed in the other pin with the same method. Now. The way this kit works is the pins are held in with a little spring washer and a C-clip, but there's no room for the spring washer, so I had to hold this pin in just with the C-clip, and I don't think that's a great way to do it. In fact, if I had a welder, I probably would have put like a little tack weld on there. Now on the other pin, you can see the spring washer and the C-clip both fit in, and probably I should have spray painted the uh, hinge, but I'm not really much into spray painting. So now i got to reinstall the spring, so I've squashed it in the vise, I've held it together with some zip ties, put it back in the hinge, and now I'm clipping off the zip ties. So there you have the finally reassembled hinge. And I'm going through this really quickly because I don't want this video to last forever, but this process took a long time. It was kind of a pain. And like I said, I probably should have just bought a new hinge, but then it would have been hard to realign it. So here's a view of the hinge with the new pins installed. And with the door out of the way, I was able to use a socket and an extension to at least start the nuts on the hinge. And that was way easier than using the socket the other way or using the gear wrench. But for the other nut, I had to use the gear wrench. Here you can see the socket on the back nut, but the, the other nut I had already tightened with the gear wrench. And here are the bolts that go into the door. I tightened those with the gear wrench. And here's a shot of the hinge with the new pins in it. And it looks pretty good. You know, those pins are nice and clean and shiny. And now here's the door. I've taken it off of the garbage can and off of the jack, and it's hanging pretty well. And when I went to close it, it lined up great. It wasn't banging anymore, so replacing 
the pins in both of the hinges was necessary. I thought I could just replace the pins in the lower hinge, but that wasn't going to work. And the striker and the latch line up great. And I was able to close the door like the car was brand new. Here's what the hinge looks like six months later. It's just as bad as before, if not worse. I wouldn't call this a failure because the pin kit only cost 15 bucks. And I learned something while I was doing the job, but if you're going to do this, you might be better off just getting an entire new hinge. But if you do decide to install the pin kit, good luck and thanks for watching.